Hey guys, Cindy Lynn here. And Tony. Bridgeview Adventures. And we are getting ready to do the install on our solid RF cell phone booster. Yep. And we wanted to do a full shout out thank you to Solid RF for, <laughs> for letting us try out the cell phone booster. They actually did donate this to us to go ahead and do a testing for their company as it is a new product and we just wanted to say thank you so much and they are also allowing us to do a giveaway for you guys so that is ending soon so hopefully this video will be posted before <laughs> we do the actual giveaway but we just wanted to do that shout out for solid rf thank you so much So one of the main things that we have to figure out is, is, is where we want to locate the internal antenna. Now, according to the instructions that comes with the unit is, is that this antenna is to be directly over the top of the amplifier unit that's going to be an antenna that is mounted on top of the roof. So we have to find a spot that's directly above it. And also, there has to be a distance of at least four feet from it so that there's not any interference in, in the frequencies. So... We're kind of looking around the RV and we're trying to find spots where we think that we would like it. We have to take in consideration that we're going to have to run a wire to it and from it because we also have to get power to it. So kind of looking around where we actually have power outlets and um, where would be uh, uh, more congruent for us to, to, to place this. Now, one other item I'm, I'm trying to figure out also is we have to get from outside inside to the in interior, which means we're going to have a hole somewhere. Either we're going to come through a vent that's uh, existing on the roof, or we're going to have to make a new a new hole. And if we make a new hole, I want to make it on the side as opposed to being in the roof. So we're going to look around the camper and we're going to see if we can't find a spot to put this bad boy. All right, to start off, we're gonna put the antenna together just to get it to get it uh, ready. It, it comes with the short cord. as a slot in this mount. We're gonna slide this through that hole. It comes out through the bottom. When it comes through the bottom, this is your exterior antenna. You're gonna screw that end onto the antenna. And this will slide back down. It has three holes, which receives three stainless bolts. We'll get those screwed in, and that'll make the antenna ready. All right, so we got the antenna assembly ready for, for the roof. This is the bracket that it mounts onto. So you want to feed that through the large hole there. And take the nut off the bottom of the spring mount. It goes through that small hole. And we are going to put on the compression washer. And the bolt. Then your cord will go through that. There's plenty of room through that. I'll take a wrench and I'll tighten that down a little bit, not too much. And that will be ready to go. Now this, inevitably, on the booster itself, this will mount just like this on those three holes once we get this mounted on the roof. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get this stainless plate here that the amplifier mounts to and we've got to get onto the roof and we have to locate where this plate is going to go and get her glued down. It'll take at least 24 hours for that to dry before we can uh, do the final assembly of that. So up to the roof we go. Don't fall off. Alright, 
So this mount is going to get glued down to this surface. And the first thing we want to do is we want to find out how good of a signal is whether everything's going to be okay. So we're going to do a dry run. Just going to drop it down. We decided to do we have the antenna on the roof kind of where we thought we'd want it and we've ran the wire in it's just temporary nothing's drilled nothing's going on and we put the antenna where we thought we might mount it and what we found is we weren't getting a good signal so we got an extension cord and we have plenty of plenty of length and so we're kind of moving it around we're trying to find sweet spots and we are finding that, you know, it, it can go from 6 meg download where we thought we would want it. And if we set it up here on top of the address, we're getting 20. So it really is dependent and is very important that you do dry test before you mount this to make sure that the, that the antenna is in, uh, inside that frequency band, uh, that frequency um, bubble uh, to verify where you're wanting to put it or where you're going to put it is going to work. Okay, on the back of on the back of the indoor antenna, there is a plug here for outside. That is where your outside antenna is going to plug in. Here's where your power goes into. This is if you're going to run a second antenna on the interior, you would unscrew this cap and you would plug it into there. If you are not using it though, you must have that cap on. So right now we're going to do a dry run before we go and get all this mounted and drilling holes and cutting into things. We're going to do a dry run just to see what kind of signal differences we get. Make sure that it's got enough distance underneath uh, above it. Make sure we're lined up good. And if everything works out, then uh, we'll get to gluing that back onto the roof and uh, see about running our wires. Um, after doing dry tests with all the wiring just run through the window and everything, uh, it turns out the, that we're getting a better signal just right here inside the cabinet, which is only uh, 15 inches from the roof, and then another 15. We're with we're we're less than the four feet from the antenna outside, but it's working great. Uh, I mean, it's double what it is at the base, and almost triple with it not being on at all. So, and we have power right at the other end of this. All I got to do is get the cable through the wall to outside right there, and this will be done. So I'm off to the roof to glue the mount down and give that 24 hours to dry before we uh, bolt it all down up, up top. All right, so we tested it and we found out where we wanted where did we want to place it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disassemble it, but I want to mark where I was at. And the tape will act as another function later on. All right. So we we're going to mark where we're going to place this. Then we're going to clean it off. And then we'll glue her down. This is also going to help keep the glue from going all over the place. It's just soapy water at first. Clean the roof off. It's doing a good job already. Now we want to make sure we have all greases and everything off. So we're going to use a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Real quick like. Our glue of choice was flex glue. Sounds cheesy, but everything I read online basically said that it was really good for RVs. Also, it was compatible with the type of roofs that these are used for. This is not caustic. This is 
it's not harmful in any way. But I don't want to get it all over my hands. So I'm going to put a pretty good layer on there. I don't want to push the glue down in those holes. Then it'll make hard to, it'll be too hard to, it'll hard to get the screws in. And the glue will fill up those holes. We will give that 24 hours. Dry and cure. All right, so I put the assembly together. We put the antenna, ran the wire through the hole, down through this hole. I'm going to line it up so that it's in the front. And I torque that screw down, and it's tight. Then this this plate assembly screws to the three spots. Got them torqued down. Time to go to the roof. The mounting plate has dried for 24 hours. We're ready to put it up on the roof. Well, I'm trying to find out where, where up here, when I drill through hole through, that it will go into into the cabinet. So after I, so after we drill the hole um, to make it look nice, I got some uh, rubber grommets, and the rubber grommet is a rubber obviously it's round clean it has a groove in it see the groove so the material actually goes in it and it has a nice finish I also have some uh, electrical putty that you put into that or whatnot that'll make it waterproof and keep the water out another thing to do is is that you start with a very small drill bit and that way if something goes awry there's just a pinhole all right, here you go, guys. Oh my goodness. Anybody in there? Hello? Wow. That's the big one. <laughs> Look out, like, camper! Should be the last one. Isn't there? That's it. So this is the end that's going to get fed into the into the side of the camper, into the inside. I'm going to take the grommet. I'm going to go ahead and feed that on first. And that'll go all the way to the end. I'm also going to have another wire that's going to come out later. So it, yes, it is a little bit bigger, but we have another wire coming out that's going to feed a, an LED light strip going across underneath the awning. So, you know, we're doing double duty here. She looks good. So let's get this mounted. I already got the assembly made here, and it simply sits right on top like that. Air moving this direction, so the air moves over uh, the, the, uh, the antenna. Got my little bag of screws here. You should probably come up after this is installed and you've uh, traveled. After each trip for probably oh, a trip or two, maybe three, just to check and make sure everything is still. Screws are still tight. Mount's still good. Last screw. Solid as a rock. 
internal antenna gets plugged into antenna number one, which is the one on the right hand side. Make sure both of them are snug. And that's it. Now this wiring probably needs to be held down a little bit. So we're gonna use some of this, some of this screw, uh, the uh, cable clamps that they came with in the package. These cable clamps come with a very nice cable clamp, clips in both directions. Comes with a 3M two-sided sticky side tape. It goes on each side. Very nice, very nice. So I'm gonna hold it in this direction, probably right there. We're done up here. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this electrical putty tape on. And the putty tape is what we make outside seals with so I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull the wire out a little bit and Right, so what do we think? Let's backtrack and, and take a look at the install. Yeah, let's take a look at it. Mounting the mounting bracket on top of the roof, easy. Uh, doing the final hookups or whatnot, easy. So the only hard part, mm -hmm. really wasn't hard, it's just nerve wracking is, is in our case, drilling a hole in the side of your camper. <laughs> But like yes. I said, we, we were, we're doing double duty with that one. We are going to put some lights over there. So that was the reason why we did drill a hole. And we did draw it on the side of the camper, not through the roof because mm -hmm. less likely for water. Yeah, I mean, overall, it really is a pretty quick and easy process. I think I could have even done it by myself. Yeah. The, <laughs> only, the only thing that we could suggest is that you must do a dry run. Absolutely. Put the yes. unit on the roof, just sitting up there, run the wire through a window or through your door, plug the antenna inside, and move it around right in the location of that antenna directly below it, moving up and down and in a circle. And keep doing a speed test on your phone to find out where that sweet spot is. Because we our speeds were all over the place mm -hmm. till we got right where that one spot was, and now it's screaming. Yeah, I, we actually had to move it around several times to, to find that exact sweet spot. And it actually is not according to the recommendations by Solid RF. It's actually a little higher than the four foot difference. What works for us might not work for you That's or right. for someone else. So or your carrier, you've got whoever to do your cell phone your, carrier yeah. is. <laughs> do it your own testing. It will be advantageous um, in the end where you figure out it's going to And go luckily so. ours is falling inside a cabinet. So mm -hmm. all of the extra wire is rolled up in the cabinet. Uh, the plug, right now we're just using the 110 plug. We can just put it on an extension cord if we need to. If we get to an area and it starts to act differently, we can take it out of the cabinet and we can move it around anywhere we want at that location and see if, and see if it improves at that, at that different spot or with a different carrier. And we will be doing some speed testing and doing some trial and error stuff or whatever in another video coming up. And then one other thing I just wanted to mention is you do have to register your cell phone booster with your cell carrier. So it says that in the directions and the instructions. So you do have that added process that you need to go online and, and sign up your booster. It and works without it, but it's something, it's one of the steps. You're right, it'll go ahead and work, but you're required to go ahead and, and sign up for that with your carrier. And then the last thing is we just wanted to mention that the, the install actually was pretty easy. The oh, yeah. logistics of it and figuring it out is what takes the, the longest. Mm -hmm. And But overall, I'd say less than a half day project. And that's with, you know, running here and there, grabbing different tools, different, you know, things that you might need. 
but overall it's it's really a pretty easy process yep. you gotta wait 24 hours after you mount and glue your your plate down on the roof but after that it's just a matter of hooking things up and yep. drilling a few hoes if you have to do that and <laughs> we did it here at a campsite yeah so. we're at a campsite with the river behind us pretty view so it was a really fun project and we we had a good time and we're going to enjoy having that cell booster you know for connection to the world so yeah so you guys get out there and get connected we'll see you out there we'll catch you at the campsite